Okay, so after the last, over the last um, few videos, we've looked at different ways that we can sketch parabolas by utilising a number of our different quadratic algebra techniques. Obviously, if the parabola at the equation, the quadratic equation is given in turning point form, it's very straightforward to sketch. We know that we can convert to turning point form using the completing the square method. We know that um, we don't have to convert to turning point form. We can instead find the x-intercepts, perhaps using factorisation first or using the quadratic formula. Um, we can then use the symmetry of the graph to find where the turning point is. We can also use x equals negative b on 2a, which comes from the quadratic formula. So we've got lots of different techniques. So the last um, series of three or four, well, really pretty much most of the videos in this topic so far, we've looked at here is the equation, sketch the graph. What we now want to look at today is here is the graph, what is its equation? Or here is information about what the graph looks like. From that, what is the equation? So we want to now work backwards. And again, this is about being flexible depending on the information we're given. Okay, There is not going to be... You know, if you decide I'm only going to do it this way every time, you will be either using an inefficient method or it just won't work. Okay, so it's really important that again you build in that flexibility. You you are familiar with all of the skills: factorizing, quadratic formula, completing the square. You cannot just decide to adopt one method and go with one one method forever. Okay, so what we want to think about is we've kind of seen that we can represent our quadratic equation in a number of different forms. So it might just be completely expanded out in what we might call general form. And that really tells us very, very little about the graph. We can tell whether it's happy or sad based on the a value. Um, and otherwise, um, we can't tell very much. We know from quadratic formula that the axis of symmetry is at negative b on 2a. We actually also know from this form, the easiest thing to find from this form is the y-intercept would be at 0c. Okay? But that doesn't give us a lot of information about the graph from which to start. And really, this doesn't come straight from the equation. We'd still have to do a calculation for that. The other two forms are much uh, more helpful. So straight away, we can see that our vertex or turning point, they're synonyms for the same thing. Um, in turning point form, we, can, we know that the turning point or vertex is going to have coordinates of h, k. And that therefore means that the axis of symmetry has an equation of x equals h. Um, if we've got our um, graph in a factorised form, okay, so again we can tell, we, oh, we can also tell whether it's a happy or sad shape from the a value here, we can tell whether it's a happy or sad shape from the a value here. In all three versions, this a, which will ultimately be the coefficient of x squared, tells us whether the graph is happy or sad, okay. So you can definitely tell that in any form. In the factorised form, what we get straight away are the x-intercepts. If, for example, I ask you to sketch me the graph, you know, x minus 2, x plus 3, straight away, and you can do the steps, but you don't really need to as you get more familiar with it, you can see that the x-intercepts are going to be when x equals 2 and when x equals negative 3. So in this instance, we can see our x-intercepts are going to be when x equals m, so m0, or when x equals n, so n0. So if you've got the equation in factorised form, you can immediately tell where the x-intercepts are, which means you also know where the axis of symmetry is, because the axis of symmetry is halfway between your x-intercepts. Add them together and divide them by 2 gives you your axis of symmetry. Knowing the axis of symmetry, the importance of that is not in the sketching of the graph. The importance of that is that that gives you the x-coordinate of the turning point from, then, from where you can then find the turning point. So again, thinking about what information have I got and therefore which is the best form to start with. If I'm told what the turning point is, I'm going to start from turning point form. If I'm told the x-intercepts, I'm going to start with a factorised form. Regardless of the form that the question asks for, if the question asks you to give your answer in this form, you don't have to start with that form. If you've got the turning point, start with this form, find this equation, then expand it out to turn it into that form. Okay, So don't don't go based on the form that the question asks for. Go based on the form that's going to allow you to most easily find the equation, depending on the information you've got, and then expand or factorise to get the required form. Okay. All right, let's work our way through the examples. So question one, um, a parabola has x-intercepts at negative 3 and 5. So straight away, I've got my x-intercepts. I'm going to start with a factorised form. Okay. Um, so my x-intercepts are at negative 3 and 5, so that immediately tells me that I'm going to have brackets that are x plus 3 and x minus 5. 
What I don't know and what I'm never going to know immediately from the information is what is the dilation. Okay? So there are infinitely many graphs that have x-intercepts of negative 3 and positive 5. There is this one. There is this one. There is this one. Okay? So the x-intercepts alone don't tell us about the equation of the graph. We then need to think about the dilation and or reflection. And using um, we can find that value by using the additional point that they've given us here. So we know that it also passes through the point 1, 4, which tells us when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 4. And so we sub that into our equation, subbing the point 1, 4 into the equation, y is 4 when x is 1. And from there, we can solve to find what a has to be. Okay. So we've got 4 equals a times 1 plus 3, which is 4, times 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. Okay. So we've got 4 equals negative 16a. And so a is 4 divided by negative 16, which means it is negative 1 quarter. And so therefore, our equation is y equals negative 1 quarter x plus 3 times x minus 5 don't need to expand it out. It didn't specify the form you need to give your answer in, so um, that's perfectly fine to leave it in the factorised form. It's quick and easy to sketch from that form because I know the x-intercept straight away. So there's no um, hierarchy in terms of which form is the better one to give your answer in. Um, so only manipulate your final answer if the question specifies a particular format. Okay, a quadratic function has its turning point at 3, negative 4 and it's y-intercept at 0, 14. Find the equation. Okay, so turning point immediately tells us we're going to go with turning point form. So that's x a times x minus h, so x minus 3, all squared, minus 4. Now, the place people will go wrong here is you'll leave, just, you'll leave the squared out, and therefore what you end up with isn't a quadratic equation at all. It's a linear equation. So it's really important that you don't omit the squared, otherwise it's not a parabola at all. Um, okay, so again, we've got all of our known values in here except for a, but that's why we've got an additional point here. We know it's got a y-intercept at 0, 0, 14, which means when x equals 0, y equals 14. So let's substitute that information into the equation. y is 14 when x is 0, and then we can solve for a. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Negative 3 all squared is 9. Divide both sides by 9, and so I get that a is 2. And so therefore, my equation is... 2 times x minus 3 all squared, take away 4. Okay, question 3. Find the equation of the quadratic graph picture below. Now, I've got turning points and x-intercepts. I've actually got more information than I need to find the equation of this parabola. So you can choose whether you want to start with the factorised form or the um, turning point form, completely up to you. Uh, I'm probably going to go with turning point form. So we're going to have y equals a times x minus minus 4, so x plus 4, all squared, and plus 27. Now, in this case, we can see from the graph that we know that a is going to be a negative number because we can see the sad shape parabola. Don't, I, I strongly discourage you from writing negative a. Okay? You'll get yourself confused at the end. You'll then find a is positive and then you'll, you'll, you'll accidentally write positive. Just start with exactly the same formula you would in any other equation. a times x plus 4 all squared plus 27. But you know that a is going to be negative when you work out what it is. Okay? So if it doesn't turn out to be negative, you've done something wrong and you need to rethink it. Okay? So now we can use either of our other points negative 7, 0 or negative 1, 0 to find the a value. I'm going to go with negative 1, 0, smaller numbers. So when x equals negative 1, y equals 0. I'm sorry, negative 1 plus 4 all squared plus 27. Okay, I'm going to take away 27. Oops. Equals a times, now negative 1 plus 4 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. And so a is going to be negative 27 divided by 9, which is negative 3. Indeed, we can see a is a negative number. That confirms what we can see in the graph. And so therefore, we have negative 3 times x plus 4 all squared plus 27. Now, perhaps just a quick aside. If instead you decided to start with the x-intercepts, so you would have started with y equals a times x plus 7 times x plus 1. Okay, and again, you need to use a point to find the value of a. Now, you've already used these two points to come up with this much of the equation. 
If you substitute either of those points in again to try and find A, you'll simply find that 0 equals 0. So for example, if I were to put the point negative 1, 0, I'll write this out, don't copy this out, I'm going to erase it in a second. If I were to put negative 1, 0 in here, you get Y equals 0, and you get A times negative 1 plus 7 times negative 1 plus 1, and you get 0 equals A times 6 times 0, and 0 times anything over here is just 0, and so you get 0 equals 0, and it doesn't actually tell you what A is, because it cancels A out by multiplying it by 0. The same thing would happen if you subbed in negative 7. Okay, so um, it's important that if you've already used 7 and uh, you've already used these two points to find the x-intercepts, um, so therefore to get the brackets in your equation, you must use the other point to sub in to find A. So we're going to put negative 427 into the equation. So we get 27 equals A times negative 4 plus 7 times negative 4 plus 1. So we get 27 equals A times 3 times negative 3. So 27 equals A times negative 9. So A equals 27 divided by negative 9, so negative 3. And so therefore, your equation in this form would be x plus 7 times x plus 1. These are exactly the same equation, okay? They're both perfectly correct. Let's have a look in the cards over here. If I were to expand out the turning point form, so negative 3 times x plus 4 all squared plus 27, I get that equation there. If I were to expand out um, my uh, factorised form of the equation, so negative 3 times x plus 7 times, oops, sorry, times x plus 1, I get the same equation as well. If you give your final answer here as y equals negative 3x squared minus 24x minus 21, that's perfectly correct as well. Okay, um, But I wouldn't unnecessarily expand out. There's no reason for you to do so. The question doesn't specify it. Leave it in turning point form or factorised form. Okay, example 4. Consider the parabola y equals 1 half x minus h all squared plus 5. So we've just got the one unknown here in the question. Whereas when we start from scratch, we've always got three unknowns. A, M, and N. So you need the two x-intercepts plus another point to find A. You've got A, H, and K. Now you need the turning point for both of those. Turning point sort of counts as two bits of information. And you need another point to enable you to find A. If you're going to start from this form, which we'll talk more about next year really, um, you would sub in your three points and you'd have three simultaneous equations. So you'd need three different points. Okay. So you need three bits of information, bearing in mind the turning point sort of counts as two. Here, you've only got one unknown thing, so we're only going to need one bit of information, so one point. And we've been given that one point here. Find the value of h if the y-intercept is 13. So we go through the point, sorry, that's an x-intercept, 0, 13. So we're just going to sub that in. When x equals 0, y equals 13, and that will enable us to find h. Um, so we're subbing in the point 0, 13. y is 13. When x is equal to 0... Okay, and we can find h. So I'm going to subtract 5. 8 equals half times, no, I'll just write that as negative h all squared. Now, this is, people make an error here. You're not going to get 4 equals negative half all squared because that would be halving the left hand side but doubling the right hand side. The opposite of halving is to times by 2. You want to times this by 2 to get rid of it, and so you want to times this by 2. You can also think about half of something. This is the same as negative h all squared on 2. So you want to times by 2. Okay. So careful just about your algebra there. So times in by 2, 16 equals... Now negative, negative h all squared is negative h times negative h. That's positive h squared. Okay. And then square root h could be positive or negative root 16. So h could be positive or negative 4. So we've actually got two answers here. And that's perfectly correct. If we think about what's happening here with this graph, um, it's a happy parabola. Don't know how much it's been translated left or right. It's translated up 5, and it's got a y-intercept at 13. So it's quite possible that the turning point will be, if we think about positive 4, 5. So, so if h was... Um, yeah, sorry, if h was positive 4, the turning point's at 4, 5, with the y-intercept at 13. But actually, we get another parabola that meets all the same criteria if the turning point is at negative 4, 5.
and it can still be happy and have its y intercept at 13. Okay? And the same dilation factor. So there are two possible values for h here. Both are perfectly correct and both are both should be provided. If you were to only give h equals positive 4 here, if you were to forget to take the positive and negative when you do the square root, um, it wouldn't get full marks here. So you must have both. Okay, um, the work today is on a worksheet which I've linked um, to on Canvas um, and you should complete the questions in your exercise book.